I think that songs have to have, even if they're not real, uh, uh, they have to have an emotional sort of honesty. Yeah, I, I had this really bad week, uh, uh, and you know, my mom got cancer, and but she's fine now, so you know. Uh, and me and my girlfriend broke up. I got diagnosed with uh, autoimmune disorder, which is like this genetic disease where you have all these things that could go wrong with you. It's all happened in the span of like four days. I also quit smoking. I was like a two pack a day smoker. And I was living in this tiny little flat in Los Feliz, like a one room little apartment. I was like broke and I didn't have any money and the gas was turned off. And then I kind of snapped. Sometimes things happen to people in their lives and suddenly they just don't care about anything else and they're just gonna do what they're gonna do. And Suddenly, all I wanted to do was play music. We met uh, summer of 06. We started playing together in uh, this warehouse downtown LA, right on the LA River. And uh, I don't know, for about 20 to 25 hours a week, we were just getting in there, pounding these songs out, just me and him, getting the basic, uh, just the basics down on these songs. And we actually, we booked our first gig uh, just as a two-piece. We were just, we were like <laughs> tired of like not having bandmates and waiting for them and you know we were in this room and you know we would just get in there and stomp and scream and wail and we, we sort of started to feel like maybe we're onto something with this thing and then I met Anna there was one particular night where I ran into you at a taco stand you mentioned this band and I was like oh, that's so LA to be a guy with a band and then I went and listened to it I was like this band is really good so then I, I wanted to be a part of it and then uh, Steven and I have been friends for a, a long time uh, since uh, we both met in San Francisco about eight years ago, seven, yeah. eight years ago. I moved back down to L.A. and Mikkel was there and he called me up and he was like, so don't you play like keyboard or something? And I was like, yeah, you know, so I went in and I played a little bit of keyboard and I was, was like, like you know, magic. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I play guitar. And then so I picked up the guitar. The rest, you know, is history. And then the, and then the last uh, was, Noah. was Noah. Noah's actually like the best bass player in Los Angeles. He really was. It, he's, he's really, he can really wail. So he actually said no. Uh, when I first asked him to be in the band. It's true. But eventually, you know, he, he came around. There's like a very social element to being in a rock and roll band because you're, you're with these same people 24 hours a day and you have to change to become like this more social being that is way more in tune with the people around you. And you become very in tune with people's moods and, you know, there's a certain like uh, humility to it. It's good for you, you know? You have to like learn to get along with people. You have to learn to, you know, understand what makes people have good days and bad days and try and amplify that or when you're, how to, how to manage your own sort of flaws or whatever. And that kind of process has been like huge because on a day-to-day -day level, it's more about that than it is about really, you know, crowds or radio or shows or anything like that because you're just spending all this time with the same group of people. So it's become, I think, part of our important things in the band that we stay friends with each other, that we all become supportive friends and that we, uh, it helps keep us grounded, I think.